When it first showed up in 1977, the MiG-29, like its very distant ancestor, the MiG-15, was a startling revelation. The Soviets were catching up with the U.S. aeronautical technology. The U.S. intelligence community first learned of the new Soviet aircraft from satellite photos in November 1977, about the time of Jet's first flight. Simply by looking at the size and the shape of it, it was clear that the Soviets were developing a counterpart to our F-16 and F-18. The MiG-29 Fulcrum is a fourth generation jet fighter aircraft designed in the Soviet Union. Developed by the Mikoyan Design Bureau as an air superiority fighter during the 1970s. The MiG-29 entered service with the Soviet Air Force in 1983. The best known Russian fighter in service today, the MiG-29 Falkrum, first flew on October 6, 1977, and was to radically change the future of the Soviet Air Force. Compared with any Western contemporary, the MiG-29 was uniquely configured and optimized as a highly maneuverable air-to-air -air fighter and beyond visual range interceptor. The overall -air performance of Mikoyan's fighter has in recent years been highlighted at air shows worldwide, where the aircraft has stunned onlookers with a series of breathtaking maneuvers. On this program, we take to the air with the MiG-29, the pride of a Russian Air Force. I was lucky to start flying the MiG-29 as an Air Force pilot, since retraining in 1984 as a military pilot, covering all aspects of combat missions, I now fly as a test pilot, testing new types of equipment and weapons, aiming systems, modifications, prototypes including updates of the basic MiG-29. Now having flown many foreign fighters and having gained a lot of experience on these aircraft, I feel I can now draw comparisons. The MiG-29 is an incredible aircraft for two main reasons. It has very high maneuvering performance, a thrust-to-weight ratio complemented by very simple controls and a well-designed cockpit that is easy to understand. There are a few shortcomings with the aircraft, such as the not very high fuel capacity in the internal tanks. But this is a minor thing. One should not consider comparisons, but to look at the tasks as set out for the MiG-29. The purpose of the MiG-29 is to gain air superiority in close combat and fulfilling attack missions in frontline areas. This is its purpose, and due to its merits, the MiG-29, in my opinion, is an outstanding aircraft. John Farley OBE was the first Western test pilot to fly the MiG-29 Falcrum when it arrived at Farnborough, England, in 1990. He recalls this historic flight. Farley had got a series of manoeuvres that he particularly wanted me to do. These were ones which were going to show the aeroplane in its best possible light from point of view of low speed maneuverability the things that he knew we couldn't do with our aeroplanes. They were largely matters of pulling the nose up, climbing to very low speeds and then immediately rolling the aeroplane, pulling hard through, a, a, a fighting turn reversal which you would use in combat, but done from attitudes and speeds that he knew that I knew our aeroplanes would not do. And it was this didn't surprise me in the least because with with my background it was quite clear to me that an aircraft that could be flown to 45, 47 Alpha and full back stick and so on and an aeroplane that could fly the way I had watched it fly it was clearly going to be able to do these manoeuvres but nevertheless to actually get in it and do it is still pretty impressive stuff. He said, we'd do some low speed manoeuvring, he said, down to uh, zero knots. <laughs> and um, 
he he said Valeri fly, and uh, and he just goes the throttle, pull the nose up. We got the nose up to about seventy degrees. We just waited. The speed dropped right off the clock. The airplane slides backwards, and now you've got the recovery. Well, the re the only trick with the recovery was that you had to lead with the right hand throttle. Because you've got these two jet engines, which both go around the same way. Gyroscopic couples are there. And when this thing pitches violently nose down, as it will do, as soon as you pull a stick back and get the air under the elevator, when it pitches violently nose down, you, you know that gyroscopic couples work 90 degrees out of the plane of rotation you, you would expect, so it makes the nose yaw. It makes the nose yaw, yaw off to the right, because it is pitching vertically. And so you were supposed to lead with the right-hand throttle, because there's no speed on this thing at the moment, so it's not going to fit in with the rudders. Lead with the right hand throttle just to stop the nose slashing up. Well, the first one, uh, he had used this term lead with the throttle in the briefing. And so I, I just sort of tentatively um, sort of led with it. And when the nose fell through, it yawed off slightly to the right. Valeri fly. So Valeri did one. And, and I just sat there. And I can see it now as if it was two minutes ago. You know. This thing steers right up in the sky. And it started to slide back. And I was just looking at the throttles out of the corner of my eye. You know. and, and the right hand one went -dum, all the way forward into full reheat. And then the left hand one went -dum, all the way forward into full reheat. You know. And that's what he meant by lead with the left throttle. He meant push it all the way. They had achieved extremely benign handling at edges of we call the envelope, the that part of the speed, height, attitude, angle of attack combinations you can take an airplane to. Mm -hmm. They had achieved wonders compared to the sort of aircraft that we had in service at that time. While originally oriented towards combat against Emmy and Emmy aircraft, Many MiG-29s have been furnished as multi-role fighters capable of performing a number of different operations and are commonly outfitted to use a range of air-to-surface armaments and precision munitions. MiG-29 has been manufactured in several major variants. The most advanced member of the family to date is the Mikoyun MiG-35. Later models frequently featured improved engines, modern radar, considerably increased fuel capacity, and some aircraft have also been equipped for aerial refueling. Following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, a number of states have continued to operate the MiG-29, the largest of which is the Russian Air Force. The Russian Air Force wanted to upgrade its existing fleet to a modernized configuration, but financial difficulties have limited deliveries. The MiG-29 has also been a popular export aircraft. Over 30 individual nations either operate or have previously operated the aircraft to date. India being one of the largest export operators of the pipe. MiG-29 leaves out an historic bypass of MiGs past and present during the International Aviation and Space Salon at Tchaikovsky. Five MiG aircraft took part in the bypass, including a 21 fish bed, 23 slogger, 25 fox bat, 29 fulcrum, and 31 boxheim.
The Russian MiG-29 Fulcrum fighters were flying aerobatics at the International Air Tattoo at RAF Fairford, claimed to be the world's largest military aviation display. The MiGs, Russia's most advanced fighter, were at about a thousand feet, performing a series of crossover manoeuvres. These pictures, shot by a BBC team covering the display, show the plane coming in horizontally from the left, apparently clipping the wing of the other aircraft with its fuselage. The result was devastating and spectacular. Despite the instant inferno, there was only one minor scorching injury on the ground. Both pilots ejected immediately, one drifted to earth with a life raft still attached. One pilot suffered spinal injury, the other was only slightly hurt. Some amateur videos slowed down showed the catastrophic effect of what looked like a momentary loss of concentration by one of the pilots. And in another sequence shot by the BBC, both pilots have safely ejected, two to three seconds after impact. Emergency teams rushed to douse fireballs fuelled by the crashes. One within the airbase perimeter damaged a Hercules on the ground. The other came down in fields near a caravan site. The air crew, said to be among Russia's best test pilots, were extraordinarily lucky. Both walked away. One, dazed, awaited help. The other, also a little shaken, looked for something to steady his nerves. To give a concrete answer on what happened at Fairford is difficult. One can speak for far too long about the subjective and objective factors which led to the accident. There are several reasons connected with the organization of the flight and the meteorological factors on the day. On top of this, there were mistakes of ours made during the flight. I am just happy that we remained alive and that nobody was hurt on the ground. This is the most important factor. They say that every cloud has a silver lining, and we have gained experience from this incident, although at a very high cost, a bitter cost. Nothing can be done about it, it's life. My first feeling as my feet touched the ground was that of disappointment. We wanted to demonstrate the aircraft at its best. The demonstration program we prepared was both challenging and spectacular. It was initially received very well in the Czech Republic. After the crash, I was very nervous, because I did not know what had happened to Alexander, and I started looking for him, although we had landed in different places. I saw him in the hospital and was relieved to see that he was all right. I recollect the accident with feelings of disappointment. There were many reasons for the MiG crash at Fairford in which I was involved. A special commission was set up to carry out an investigation into the accident. Looking back, there were certainly drawbacks in the flight organization. Both aircraft deviated too much when performing two successive loops, which was not ideal. We also miscalculated when preparing for this flight, not allowing for variants in the event of a recovery situation. Not having these variants resulted in us not being able to avoid colliding with each other after our initial separation. That is how I see the accident from my point of view. I think the seat was designed well for an ejection from that low altitude. The cockpit was destroyed, but it did not result in the failure of the ejection seat system. I give thanks to the designer of this seat. At the time I did not know what had happened to Sergei, or where the aircraft had fallen, or even if there was damage on the ground, and God forbid if anyone had been killed. I felt huge disappointment, because the accident had happened during a demonstration flight at the show. The Soviet Union's newest aircraft carrier, Tbilisi, sails across the waters of the Black Sea as post for a series of takeoff and deck landing tests with MiG 29 care, flown by the Mikoyan test pilot Taktar Abakarov.
Test pilot Abakirov is concerned that there seems to be a communication problem between the MiG and the aircraft carrier with regard to the deck landing. The Kayan chief test pilot Roman Tuskaya played a vital role in the development of MiG-29 during the flight test program. Tasayev and Anatoly Kvotchur were responsible for the first appearance of the MiG in the West when they arrived at Farnborough in 1988 both demonstrating the capabilities of the aircraft. Display flights by Roman Taskayev at Zhukovsky in Berlin, seen here, confirmed that the MiG-29 was certainly capable of performing maneuvers at its rival, the F-16.
нормально все. Вы сейчас парк выбрали? Нет, нет. Течек это улучшит. Every flying display is complex and a pilot must fix all the maneuvers he's to make firmly in his mind. One way is by walking through, something the onlooker may find rather puzzling. Gromov Flight Research Institute test pilot Alexander Ganeyev performs this routine before each flight, in this case a display in the MiG-29.
bump, I guess.
осталось 550 килограмм. Все, а тут есть четвертый Смотри экран. Разрешил проход. Шестьдесят девять десятый еще повторять выше? Да, то же самое. Почти на фиксированной и на многократной в конце снижения значительной. Хорошо, значит я их повторю. Смотри экран. А, Горбанов 421. Разрешите вывести на полосу. Начинаю искать джинов, повторю, 
250 килограмм. Осталось 550 килограмм. Смотри экран. Шесть девять, все общее. Посадки готов. Семь шестьдесят девять, посадку тридцать два разрешаю. Ветер тридцать десять градусов, шесть метров. Понял.